In this video, the following topics about the setting of cord slabs and box beams will be discussed. These are some of the most common issues that the field technician should be aware of while inspecting the placement of cord slabs and box beams. Prior to setting the cord slabs or box beams, the bridge seat should be checked with a straight edge to ensure there are no low or high spots that would keep the beam from having full bearing on the elastomeric bearing pad. This check should be performed when casting the concrete in the end bents and bents. Then rechecked prior to setting the beams. If necessary, a grinder may be used to smooth out any deviations found with the straight edge. During delivery, the technician should verify the correct units have been shipped to the project. Material receipt paperwork should also be received at this time. The NCDOT approved stamp should be visible on the ends of the beams. Prior to unloading from the truck, the technician should do a visual inspection looking for damaged areas such as cracks or spalls in the unit. Any repairs that have been made at the precast yard should also be inspected. If storing the units on site and not placing them on the substructure, then they should be supported on level ground with supports placed at the bearing locations. When placing the units, they should only be lifted from the pick points installed during casting. Tag lines should be used to help control the unit while moving into position. Workers should be using fall protection if necessary. The sides of the span should be delineated by some method to warn workers of the fall hazard. Once setting of the span is complete, a more permanent means of delineation should be installed. Begin setting the units from the center and work towards the outside of the structure. The reason for setting in this manner is so any dimensional errors, dowel misalignment, or sweep issues can be worked out towards the outside and potentially avoiding any accumulation of error. Rearranging of the slabs may also be necessary if excessive sweep or large differentials in camber occur between slabs, especially if this occurs in units adjacent to the outside. While placing the units, the crew should be setting the unit as close as possible to the adjacent unit. Several common methods of this are to use pry bars as the unit is slowly lowered into place. Another method is to use a slightly longer cable or chain on the outside of the slab that is being lifted in place. This will allow the bottom corner of the slab to rest against the adjacent slab and as it is lowered in place it will slowly slide down the adjacent unit into place. Here are a few things the field technician should watch for during the installation of cord slabs and box beams. The technician should check to ensure the beams are not resting on the dowels and are sitting completely down on the bearing pads. Ends of the units should line up and be flush with the adjacent units. Full bearing of the units on the elastomeric pads should also be inspected. If they do not sit uniformly, corrective action may be required such as additional grinding of the beam seats or the unit may be in a bind from the adjacent slab or resting on one of the dowels. Camber in the units may differ significantly from adjacent slabs requiring rearrangement of the units. If problems occur during setting, contact your area bridge construction engineer. 